Okay, so let's look at how we can implement these six routines I was talking about in practice. To this end, I prepared um, a couple of example data sets that you can download from the course page and which I um, read into my current R session using these files. This preparatory script you can also download from the course web page. What it essentially does in the very beginning is um, setting up the hero package, assuming that uh, the script is called data preparation.r. It's in the subfolder r um, as it should be. Um, we are going to use the well known libraries data table for reading in um, the CSV files. We use the package here. And these are the two packages we are using for data preparation. So tidyr for the wrangling tasks and dplyr for the data manipulation tasks. And here um, in the next couple of lines, I actually read in the example data that I just mentioned. So let's just run this um, and we can get started and learn how to implement the first routine I was mentioning namely the um, reshaping of data sets from wide to long and long to wide format. We start from the task of taking a rather wide data set and turning it into a rather relatively long data set. To this end, uh, let's use uh, the data set called data raw, which looks like this. It's a typical wide data set that has been prepared for human readability. Um, because we see here two columns that refer to the years of observation. So for a human, it's quite, quite easy to read how the unemployment in Germany changes from 2017 to 2018. But what we want to do is we want to make this data set relatively longer by creating a new column um, with uh, the years 2007 to 2018 and in another new column um, with, with the values of observation for these uh, two corresponding years. As you will see in a second, this will make the data set as such longer. And because we take a relatively wide data set and make it longer, the function we use um, is from the tidyr package and it's called pivo longer. Um, the first mandatory argument you need to pass, always need to pass to this function, um, specifies the data set on which you want to um, execute your, your operation. The name of this mandatory argument is data. You do not need to be explicit about the name of the argument because it's a first mandatory argument, but I strongly recommend you to do so. So in our case, uh, that's the name of the data set, data raw. The second mandatory argument you need to provide refers to the name of the um, columns that you want to uh, that you want to be affected by the operation. In our case, as I said, it's these two columns here, 2017 and 2018, because these are the columns we actually want to change. So we specify the second argument called calls. And the easiest way of um, specifying the columns that we want to change is by using the function C and then just writing the names of the columns as character strings. So in our case, it's 2017 and 2018. There is a separate video about the so-called selection helpers. These are helper functions that allow you to select columns in a data set um, with more straightforward operations. So you could use a selection helper that tells you to select all columns that only contain numbers. Uh, there's also a selection helper that helps you to select all columns that start with the letter C, etc., etc. That's very useful in practice, so I highly recommend you to, to have a look at that uh, separate video. But it's not absolutely essential at this point. As I said, the easiest way to specify the columns you want to be affected by people longer is actually just to provide a character vector with the name of the, of the columns to be affected. And this is actually already it. Uh, so this is everything we need to provide to the function people longer for it in order to do what we actually want. So if you execute this, you now see that the data set um, has become longer. Um, before it has four um, rows, now it has eight rows. Um, we see here the two columns, 2017, 2018. These column headers are now put as values in the new column name. 
Um, here we see that um, the, the years 2017, 2018, uh, these are the years that we've seen here, and the values like, for example, unemployment in Germany for 2017, this is in this row, um, and the value for German GDP in 2018, that's uh, Germany 2018 GDP, this is this value. So these two are the same. Meaning that people longer doesn't change the content of a data frame, it's just changing its shape. Let's um, look a little bit more closely at the arguments that we've used so far. So far, we only used the argument data and calls. And um, as you see here, um, that causes the new column names to be the default option. So the default option for the column containing the names is always name and the default uh, name for the column containing the values is always value. As I said, um, we know that these values here refer to years. So we actually want this column to have the name year. And uh, we might have, uh, we, we might want to have this column here to have the name observation. I think it's usually a good practice to specify these uh, the names of the new columns explicitly. While this is not required, it makes your code a little bit more transparent. And you can use um, two optional arguments to pivot longer to, to make these change. So the first one is names two that uh, allows us to specify the name of this column here explicitly. Um, in our case, we want this name to be year and we can use the um, optional argument values to, to specify the name of this column here explicitly. So in our case, we want this to be observation. And if we then execute this code, we see that the resulting data frame is the same as before, except now we have here chosen our um, name, the names ourselves. Uh, that usually makes it a little bit more transparent and I usually rec would recommend you to do so uh, because uh, from uh, from watching your function call you know more precisely what the outcome is but it's it's optional it's not it's not required um, what I would recommend you to or what you need to do if you want to use your transform data set in the future you need to assign um, a name to it so in our case we could call it like um, data long transformed we use the assignment operator if we execute the function call we now have our transform or reshape data set bound to the name data long t and we could use it for further processing um, for instance by making it tidy again because um, as you see this data set so far it's not a tidy data set because um, not every column um, refers to one and only one variable. Um, and to change this, we would need to make this data set wider again. Yeah? So um, this is actually a very common thing that you need to combine um, the transformation of making a data set longer and wider to reach that final data set that you want or to reach a final tidy data set. So what we will do next is we will look at a function that allows us to make a long data set relatively wider. The name of the function that we're about to use to make this data set wider and to actually make it tidy might not be super surprising to you. Um, so since it's about reshaping, it's uh, also in the package tidyr. Uh, since it does something similar like Pivo Longer, it's all, the name also starts with um, Pivo and, uh, well, surprise, uh, the function we're about to use is called Pivo Wider. Also in its use, it's quite similar to Pivo Longer, um, at least in the sense with regard to the first mandatory argument we're about to use. Um, this uh, is called data. And again, we are specifying the name of the data set that we want to change. Now in our case, we want to change the data set that we've just created, data long t. And now the use differs a bit. This is the data set we have. What we want to do is basically we want to take the um, names here in the column indicator and we want this to span two new columns called unem and gp. And we want to put the values here in the column observation to be put within these two new columns. So what we need to um, tell people wider is 
from which column in the current data set it should take the information of how to name the new columns. Uh, so this means that we need to specify the argument names from because and now we need to provide the name of the column from which PWIDER should take the information that's used to create the names of the new columns. So in our case, this is this column here, the column indicator. So we just write the name of the column um, that uh, from which the names for the new columns should be taken. What is now missing is information from which columns the values should be taken that should be put into these new columns. So what we need to specify is the argument values from, and in our case, the relevant column is here, the column observation, because these are the values that we want to put um, into our new columns. So let's put observation here. Uh, let's make this a little bit more readable. And if we execute this code now, we see that we now get a data set that is actually tidy and where we have two new columns and the two new columns have the names of the elements in this column here. That's the column that we specified here for the argument names from. The values below these two new columns are taken from the column observation. So we see here the value for Germany in 2017 for unemployment is this value here for Germany unemployment 2017. And the value for Greece 2017 unemployment is, for instance, this value here. So again, people wider doesn't change the content of the data frame. It just changes its shape. And um, the mandatory arguments are more than for people longer. You actually need to provide three uh, arguments, the data set, the column name for um, the column that contains the names of the new um, columns to be created. And you need to provide the name of the column for the val from which the values for the two new columns should be created. And again, um, if you want to use that data set in the future, you need to give it a name. So in our case, we could call it data tidy t. And um, if we execute the code here, we get our transformed data set. You now see that actually we initially started from this data set raw which was a rather wide data set. And um, in this data set, the problem was that it's not tidy in the sense that it was optimized for human readability. We have these two columns, 2017, 2018, that refer to years. So they refer to one variable, meaning the data set is not tidy, but it's nicely readable for humans when it comes to the, um, for example, dynamics of unemployment in Germany. If we want to make this data set tidy, we first um, needed to make it longer using the function pivo longer, where we um, determined the um, names of the of the columns that were uh, that should um, should be transformed. So in this case, it's uh, column 2017 and 2018. Um, we then specified with the names to and values to argument the name of the new columns to be created here. The result was a rather long data set that's not yet tidy, but that can be turned into a tidy data set within one step. We did that by using the function people wider, where we first specified via the um, argument names from the column name from which the names for the new columns should be taken. That's here, the column indicator. And then we specify the name of the column from which the values should be taken. That's in this case here, the column observation. These values are then allocated below the two new columns. And you see that within two steps, we actually transform the rather wide data set that was optimized for human readability into a tidy data set 
that is now optimized for further processing in R, e.g. for making visualizations or doing data analysis. This is how you usually reshape data in practice. Especially what's typical here is that you can't transform the data set you have into a final data, um, tidy data set within one step. So the, you usually need to think stepwise um, and think about how you uh, put several wrangling tasks into a sequence that, that produces the data set you want um, at the very end. To make this a bit more readable, um, there is a trick uh, that refers to something called pipes. You do not need to use these pipes in, um, uh, in necessarily but they help you to write code that's easier to read and more straightforward to execute. Um, but I suggest you watch the separate video on using pipes that allow you to put these two steps that we just did into one. For now, we took the first step into this world of data preparation or reshaping data because um, with these two functions, people longer and people wider, you actually know everything um, or almost everything you need to know about reshaping data because the combination of function calls from people longer and people wider in 90% of the cases allow you to transform any messy data set into a tidy data set. So um, that's really cool. There's no, not many functions you actually need to learn. These are actually the only two functions from the tidyR package we're about to use in this course, and they allow us to address basically all the wrangling challenges um, that, that come up frequently in practice. Of course, tidyR has more to offer. Have a look at their documentation, but for now you're pretty, well, uh, pretty good uh, with these two functions. And um, yeah, I recommend you to have a look into the video on pipes, on how, how you can sequence these calls. And then afterwards we proceed with the topic of data manipulation, because um, things happen like this that you see here, that the column year is uh, specified as a, uh, the years are specified as characters. And for instance, you might want to have the years as numbers. So you need to change this data set. Uh, in this context. And this is part of data manipulation, something we look at in uh, a separate video.